Okay, so I've got your file open, and the first thing I want to do before we do anything is look at the preview because that tells you a lot. Um, it looks to me like you've got your actual signature as a vector, which means it's just going to you know, draw lines around the outsides of it. And um, I'm going to play this and see what happens. So here's what it did. It vectored in the outsides of your engrave of your of your signature, your to do, and now it's engraving on the top of it. So that is not going to be what you want. Um, as far as changing the order that it does its things in, you know, it's as simple as we could move this down, um, and then if we look at it and hit play, it will engrave everything first and then vector your lines on, but that's still not going to give you what you want. So here's what needs to happen. Um, we need to change all of this to the same layer, okay? And the reason is, is I'm assuming you want to cut this part out, and also this is going to be the boundary where it's going to be reversed because you're going to engrave out everything except uh, the letters, the artwork. So now when we preview it, uh, you'll notice it's still not going to engrave because it's in line. So let's go to fill. And now let's take a look and see what happens. Sorry about that. I had to mute my phone. So now you're going to get what you want. It's going to engrave everything but the letters. But if you'll notice, you have some really wide gaps here. This is your line interval, um, and this is every place the laser beam travels back and forth that shows you all of that. So, let's take a look at your settings now. Um, first of all, um, that power looks a little low, but we'll deal with that in a minute. You're going to want this somewhere more around 0 .08, and... That also depends on your focus and, and, and all that stuff, but if you'll notice, you, they're a lot closer together now, so that's going to do a lot better. With your standard focus, that ought to be about right. Now, you're going to want to cut this out also, so what I'm going to do to facilitate that is to select that outside rectangle you have, and I'm just going to duplicate it and change it to a different color. So now it's sitting on top of the original one. So the original boundary is still there. We just added a cut layer on top of it. So we're going to make that line. And then, of course, you're going to want to change your settings. Um, that may not be too far off. Uh, to be able to cut and make sure that it is the last thing in the list, not the top row, cut it out first. So now when we look at it in the preview, it looks correct, and I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Well, actually, I won't. Uh, let's play it and see what happens. It's going to engrave, except in the areas where your artwork is. And you'll have to watch real close, but that little red crosshair, when it gets done engraving, it'll go around the outside, and that's going to show you the cut. And it happened really quick, so you probably couldn't see it. Um, but it is moving. It, when, I, when I move that, you can see the square. It's just really quick but it's doing the cut at the end. So everything is right, except this is going to be a stamp, so you want to mirror this. Oops. There. That should be what you're looking for. Now, there's a ramp feature on here that's made for stamps. Um, I'm not going to turn that on right now. I'll leave that length off. Now, don't get confused. If you put a... If you put a value in here it's gonna output that ramp value this toggle does not turn it on and off this just says whether you want it to ramp the outer edge or not so this needs to remain at zero if you're not going to use ramp if there's a value there it automatically turns on the ramp function and until you understand that a little better uh, you probably should leave it off um, what that's for is it, it adds integrity See, these are pretty skinny lines, and if you made this two millimeters tall, you know, if you burned away two millimeters of rubber, uh, when you stamp that on some of these finer edges, you know, it could roll over because they're tall and skinny, and it's rubber after all, so it doesn't have a lot of structural support. So by ramping, um, it gives it more structural support. So anyway, um, and we'll go over some more of that stuff, but that should be what you're looking for. 
and I will email this file back to you. I just want to watch it one more time, but it looks like it's correct now. Now your speed and power does not look right um, for the engraving. It doesn't look too far off uh, for the cut, but you may want to double check your, let's look at it for just a minute. 7% uh, power is the absolute lowest that these machines will go. You're, you're approaching um, the ionization threshold there. If you go much lower, the laser won't fire or it will fire it, uh, intermittently. It, it won't be a good steady beam signature. So um, typically when you're engraving, I'll tell you what I do my stamp set. I've got an 80 watt machine. Um, actually... Let me save this to do stamp fixed and uh, let me just open the recent stamp project that I did and I believe it was this one. It was. Um, I have an 80 watt machine and I'm running 400 millimeters per second at 80 percent power to do stamps this is basically the same thing I don't have the cut line around it um, I think I've got ramp turned on on this one no nope, we don't okay anyway this is another stamp that I did these are known settings that I know to work for my machine I got about um, maybe three quarters of a millimeter depth so you may have to adjust your speed and power to get the depth you want if it's really really shallow and you need it a lot deeper just run it twice you can you can let me go back into yours if you need to run it again I'll tell you what you may want to do the first time um, I would turn off your cut layer so it will not output to the laser so let it go ahead and burn this don't touch your material don't move it on the bed leave it exactly where it is uh, and it won't cut it out the first time and you can look at it and see if it's deep enough if it's close you may want to leave it alone um, or drop your power and run another pass uh, or run another pass with the same settings if you want to get it twice as deep uh, and then when you run that second pass you can turn your cut on so it'll cut it out then uh, because if you leave the cut on and think you may have to run another pass it's going to cut out the rubber and it's going to shift and move and it won't be in the same place so it doesn't need to release from the rest of the material until you're sure you're done rastering the job if that makes sense and if you need anything else uh, just let us know and we'll be glad to help